me have a look at it if this works in Germany. Perhaps uh, it had worked, and uh, uh, let us have a look on it, how it will work in the future. There are some problems, and perhaps uh, we can, I can uh, show you some of this. Some of you attended last year's launch event in the Hungarian parliament, and it's good that we are keeping the ball rolling, that we are now in the Cardiff. Um, our bodies, regardless of whether they are governmental or parliamentary, have a special status. It is only by coming together beyond national borders, as we are doing with this event in Cardiff, that we can exchange new ideas on how we organ can organize ourselves better. In Germany, the Parliamentary Advisory Council on Sustainable Development, a long name for a parliamentary uh, council, uh, is a Bundestag body, a former German Bundestag. There are also a series of further bodies which have an exceptional status vis-à-vis -vis the regular specialized committees. They are furnished with very different competences. I believe this is also the case in other countries. I would like to mention a few examples here and then relate that to the competences of our Parliamentary Advisory Council. Example one. The, in the German Bundestag exists the Office of Technology Assessment. This has been enshrined in the rules of procedure of the German Bundestag since 1990. <coughs> it is staffed by scientists and attached to the Committee on Education, Research and Technology Assessment. All parliamentary groups and all committees, as well as individual members of parliament, have the possibility of formulating a request for a report on particularly uh, sensitive topics relating to the future impact of technologies. From <coughs> these many requests, the committee selects a few which are then processed <coughs> by the Office of Technology Assessment in the course of the electoral term. On such request, related to the sustainability institution in Germany and other European countries, I have brought you a summary uh, on yeah, one, one such request related to the sustainability institution in, in Germany and other European countries. From this report, I have brought you the summary. Um, on I have brought you a short summary, which I have uh, translated in uh, English. I will place it uh, nachher. If you have corresponding reports and studies, I would be delighted if you could let us have them. We in the Parliamentary Advisory Group on Sustainable Development are interested in knowing how other countries regard and assess the institutionalization of sustainability in Germany. Example two. Finally, the German Bundestag has a commission for children's concerns the so-called Children's Commissions. From the name, one might at first think that this is an institution looking after the rights of future generations and working in the spirit of the real agenda. But that's not the case. The Children's Commission is a subcommittee of the Committee on Family <coughs> Affairs, Senior Citizens, Women and Youth, and is primarily uh, concerned with children as members of society worthy of, worthy of protection, education, rights of protection, and educational opportunities. Something else than uh, sustainability. This ends my short list of examples of cross-sectoral bodies in Parliament and in the political structure in Germany. The question is how do sustainability bodies differ from these examples? We are, we, who are responsible, who are responsible for sustainability in government or parliament 
are organized in different ways, but we are united in the philosophy of the Rio Agenda 21. We are not concerned with individual topic areas in the way that the regular committees in Parliament are. Rather, we link the individual areas together. We are the people who have to say the committees that not everything that was possible in the decades of expansion is now feasible. And that political responsibility now goes far beyond one's own national borders. In order to achieve this aim, many countries have already implemented sustainability strategies. In, it is the task of those responsible for sustainability to scrutinize and evaluate these strategies regularly. We must identify specific weak points and, if possible, suggest improvements. Overall, overall <coughs> however, Parliament represents a broad electorate because sustainability needs to be broadly embedded in society the German Parliamentary Advisory Council on Sustainable Development attempts, wherever possible, to achieve a consensus in our Council between all the parliamentary groups in the German Bundestag. This rule does not exist on paper. It is simply the way the Council has operated from the UN for the past 11 years. Therefore, the decisions of the Parliamentary Advisory Council represent the highest common denominator of all the parliamentary groups in the Bundestag. In my eyes, these decisions have greater value <coughs> added for society than the decisions taken by the coalition majority, because these decisions are taken by the whole of Parliament and therefore extend beyond any electoral term. The Parliamentary Advisory Council does not therefore have to change course when the government changes. To sum up, we are in the German Parliamentary Advisory Council responsible work on a cross-sectoral sectoral and cross-cutting way and we need a broad consensus in society for this long-term task, which affects the whole of society. A coalition of all parliamentary groups in Parliament, can this work well, well in the long term? And if so, under what conditions? Are, or are there perhaps better ways to promote sustainable development? Yes, it can work well in the long term but they need to be clear and binding rules which are accepted by everybody in the Bundestag. And here there are some major obstacles to overcome. That's the problem. Obstacle one, the Parliamentary Advisory Council on Sustainable Development is that is established afresh after every Bundestag election. The period after the election, however, is dominated between is dominated by wrangling between and within the parliamentary groups over the size of the committees, the allocation of shares, memberships of the committees, and the appointment of spokespersons. Only after all these negotiations have been completed are people receptive to talking about the establishment of the parliamentary advisory group. This was, uh, we have the election in September uh, two, uh, 2013, and uh, we established the parliamentary group in uh, April mm -hmm. 2014. Mm -hmm. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. Endorsements are required from all the parliamentary groups in order to establish it. After 11 years since the establishment of the first advisory council, those prepared to endorse it are people who were members before the election and want to continue <coughs> to be. The establishment of the advisory council therefore depends on a few people who then have to work hard to convince others 
in their own parliamentary group and in some cases also in other parliamentary group, groups. Obstacle two. How does one create clear and binding rules governing cross-sectoral and cross-party cooperation? They may be defined to a degree in the resolution to establish the advisory council, but the details have to be passed on from one electoral term to the next. If many members are lost, this is difficult, particularly when, as in the present electoral term, some parliamentary groups change their members completely. It's our Social Democratic Party and, uh, and our uh, Conservative Party, not completely, but the Conservative Party, Andreas Jung, uh, is still uh, with us, but it's the only one. <laughs> A short briefing is not enough. The challenges and hence the difficulties of creating a cross-party position are ongoing, even today. Question marks, question marks repeatedly hang over its current working methods. Some find the voting procedures too elaborated, too elaborate and too long-winded. Some want to avoid votes with, uh, some want to avoid votes where experts from their own parliamentary group are involved and would rather refrain from making positions public, preferring to simply go with the government. They shy away from confrontation with their own expert colleagues. But it is precisely through this process of engagement that sustainability can become embedded in the specialized committees and uh, in regular day-to-day decision-making. That is a great advantage of a parliamentary sustainability body. These two obstacles, the search for people to endorse the establishment of the Parliamentary Advisory Council and helping new colleagues to learn the ropes can only be surmounted in the long term if the Parliamentary Advisory Council on Sustainable Development, together with its remits and its working methods, are enshrined in the rules of, project, or the rules of procedure of the German Bundestag. And that, at the time, is a third obstacle. How do we convince our parliamentary group colleagues that the Parliamentary Advisory Council on Sustainable Development should have prime responsibility for the national and European sustainability strategy and for the real process and its follow-up? that it should work on an interdisciplinary basis on these subjects and take decisions which encroach on the competence of the specialized committees. There are a few colleagues who are willing to give this carte blanche in relation to the complex multidisciplinary task of sustainable development. Even with respect to the future sustainable goals, the Sustainable Development Goals, goals the SDGs, which will replace the MDGs. There is a wrangling in the German Bundestag about where competences lies. The Parliamentary Advisory Council on <coughs> Sustainable Development was created out of the real process, but in the German Bundestag, primary responsibility rests with the Bundestag Committee on Equity economic cooperation and development. Because this was the lead committee for the Millennium Development Goal. And also because the parliamentary group does not have any position of primary responsibility within Parliament. The Environment Committee is a lead committee for the National Sustainable Strategy and the Committee on Affairs and the Affairs of the European Union for the European Sustainable uh, strategy. Let me conclude by saying that <coughs> the end to the essence for doing something good for humanity meets it, its rough limits in the process of everyday interaction and these limits have to be permanently renegotiated. And that precisely is our job to work to convince people 
we in the Parliamentary Advisory Council on Sustainable Development found ourselves at present right in the middle of this discussion. Whether the Advisory Council together with its remit and working with it become enshrined in the rules of procedure remains an open question. It may be that this issue is not resolved in the course of the current electoral term. There is no guarantee, however, that the Parliamentary Council, Advisory Council, will still be in existence in the next electoral term. I don't know. I think we will have some problems with the next electoral terms because we are too much new colleagues. What are the alternatives? One idea is an ombudsman or an ombudsperson, correct? <laughs> ombudsman or ombudswoman, also ombudsperson, uh, for parliament as there is in Hungary. Equally, there could be a parliamentary commissioner for sustainability, just as in Germany, we already have a parliamentary commissioner for the armed forces who looks after the concerns of service personnel and reports regularly <coughs> to the German Bundestag. There could also be a type of fan federal sustainability court in the same way that we have a federal court of auditors in Germany, Bundesrechnungshof, an independent institution which is not attached to any of the three branches of government. The Bundesrechnungshof monitors and reviews the financial management of the Federation and submits an annual report. The great disadvantage is that in the German Bundestag, all these reports are discussed in the respective lead committee and in the way the committees typically work are in practice simply noted. Lochen abheften. We say in German. Uh, within Parliament itself, there is in turn nobody responsible to monitor and uh, support the painstaking battle for sustainable developments. Many thanks for your attention. <laughs>